What's going on family? Welcome back to the FS channel, man. If this is your first time watching, welcome. Today we have Candace Owens making a return to the channel, you guys. Some of the things she was saying here absolutely blew my mind. And it just goes to show you that anybody can change and growth is a lifetime process. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Come on. Michael Knowles, welcome to the podcast. Wonderful to be here on your new show. It's really <laughs> nice. I don't know if you and I are even going to have a show on YouTube pretty <laughs> no, soon. I wanted to get in before we're totally new. Yeah, I was like, you know, let's have some fun on yeah. our potential way out. But I've been radically converted now on my whole show yesterday. I realized I just want to shine a light on transgenderism. Mm -hmm. I want to give them a platform to share their yeah. experiences. And I on top of that, I want a lot of jabs of any vaccines that you've got mm -hmm. uh, in uh, this year or next year when there will be no rigging in the election. I believe every single thing the liberals tell me. Whatever YouTube policies mm -hmm. say, I pretty much believe. Yeah. But you said something that I was really compelled by uh, when we did the Twitter audio thing. I know I, I sound like such a boomer, the Twitter, Twitter audio <sighs> thing. I, I don't know. I don't he was on the Palm Pilot, yeah. Well, what is it called? Twitter spaces. Mm -hmm. And you said maybe it's not even a question about whether or not we have free speech anymore or, or if it's we're allowed to say true things. Like, are we allowed to say true things anymore? And I kind of wanted you to really expand on that because I think it's super deep. That's the more egregious predation by big tech right now. It's not just that we can't say whatever we want because even the society with the most free speech and the greatest belief in voicing your opinions, they've always had it certain limitations, right? You can't make threats, you can't uh, engage in obscenity, you can't, uh, there are always taboos, there are always standards, there are always norms. But at the very least, we need to be able to tell the truth, right? right? It's, it's not just that, uh, well, Twitter, I guess, reversed course because Elon came in and then promoted this movie, What is a Woman? But when it looked like they were gonna suppress it, it's not just that they were saying, hey, naughty, naughty, you can't say that one thing. It's like, you can't state a basic truth about human nature. Okay, well, if I can't state a basic truth about human nature in the public square, then I guess I don't really have any role in my government. I guess I don't have any role in, in politics or public life. Mm. Sitting right here, he's talking about the Matt Walsh movie, What is a Woman, which was basically censored on all platforms to a certain extent and, you know, shadow banned left and right to the point where you couldn't even find it. Um, Twitter eventually re reversed on that. I think it was specifically Elon Musk who, you know, made a few changes, you know, within that uh, sector of his business. And he he brought it back to life and he made it searchable and findable again. And now, I, I, from what I'm hearing, it's doing crazy numbers, like almost the most viewed, I guess, video um, this month or something like that. So that's what, he, that's what he's referring to here. Let's get back into it. One of the things that's interesting to consider as we're living in this moment and we are seeing the that in the present the truth is being edited, right? We are being told right now that men can be women and that women can be men, and we are having voices that are censored if they say the opposite. It really mm. makes you question history full stop. If yeah. we cannot get a true account of things that are happening today <laughs> and in the current moment, what are the chances that when they told us exactly what happened during World War I, the Vietnam War, World War II, that we got the full and the transparent truth? I, I question everything. And it kind of shows you the power within con controlling what is presented and what information is, is broadcasted and what information is actually recorded in history. We're living in a time now where we see how, 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 how much it's important to have uh, freedom of speech. You know what I mean? It, it, it's vital as is right now. Like she said right here, if you speak against a certain group or a certain topic, they will, all platforms will censor you. They're not going to tell you they're going to censor you, but you will see uh, a dip in your views here, right? Um, and and that's problematic because you know if if you if what you're saying is biologically factual, you know, it's important to have both sides of that argument. It's important to have that discussion. And when you censor one side, the other side is, is able to just run off and say whatever they want, which can lead to problems down the road, um, as what she was saying to here. Let's get back into it. I question everything. Right, the Crusades, that's should. one that's been misrepresented. I know there was a great line from Norm MacDonald where he said, he says, oh, you know, I'm reading in this history textbook here. It's amazing. What are the odds? It turns out the good guys won every single war that's ever had been happening. Mm -hmm. Right. Said, oh, okay. Oh, right. What are the odds? No, that, that's of course true. And so we, we do have to question a, a lot of these things. I mean, I, I use the Crusades as an example. I was taught Crusades were the evil, violent, terrible Christians going in and oppressing the poor Muslims who were just minding their own business. And of course, 
not only is that not what happened, the, the Crusades were a defensive war and the Muslims had been trying to invade the West since the seventh century, but the ba Battle of Poitiers was, was fought 150 miles outside of Paris, not Mecca, but, and they were doing a lot of terrible things to the Christians in the Middle East. I could go on for, for mm -hmm. hours and hours about the Crusades, but what that tells you is something's changed about our culture. Our culture used to teach the Crusades from a more truthful perspective and from the perspective that we're on our own side. <clears throat> We're the good guys. We believe in what we're doing. Now it's totally the opposite. The way history is taught, we're always the bad guys. Mm. We've always transgressed. We need to give up our culture, give up our standards, give up our norms, give up our belief even in what a human being mm. is. And we're seeing the, the apotheosis of that. Mm. That's very interesting because it's, it's sort of the same about civil war. You cannot interject with it, talking about civil war about anything but slavery. Like it was like the only thing, the only thing yeah. we were ever fighting about was about slavery. It was this one great moral sin and there was so much more going on at the time. There was so much more that was inspiring uh, people to fight. I mean, obviously, the poor people that were fighting never had slaves. Of course. And when you say mm -hmm. these things, they freak out. It's like, how dare you take away from this race narrative, especially now when in America, everything is viewed via the race lens. Well, it needs to be black versus white all the time. And what I believe there are the two primary reasons they make everything about race. You know what I mean? Well, the obvious reason is, for the news outlets, it's financial gain, right? Those stories get the most traction, so they want to try to control that narrative, even though it may be harmful to the people involved, right? And the second reason is it's divisive. It keeps the people divided, um, and we all know the power comes within the numbers, right? So if we all come together and you know do our own thing and do our own research, that's where the individuals and the groups become more powerful than the, the, the news outlets. We see their numbers going down and we see other smaller, you know, just channels going up and the times are changing. Let's get back into it. It needs to be black versus white all the time. And look at the, the topic of slavery and the Civil War. In California right now, they've just had an official panel that's, that's brought up these numbers to suggest that uh, people who can claim slave ancestry, I think black people in general, can receive over a million dollars in reparations. San Francisco says you get over $5 million in reparations. California not only never had never slavery, had the fact that California would not have slavery was one of the causes of the Civil War. It was actually, <laughs> like, there is there is no argument. Stop with whatsoever. your facts, they're racist. Please don't, please don't interject with any common sense and things of that nature. They just say, oh, well, it's because mm. you're a white supremacist. And it is completely thoughtless. And it, it is, I think, leading to this condition where people are, are just emotional and stupid. And I think both of us have young children. We actually have children of the exact same age yes. for whatever Within reason. Days Within days of each other. Within days of each other, children. both of the children. And what, as I'm raising up my toddler, I now see this and he doesn't know anything, right? So he reverts to emotion. He doesn't comprehend why we are telling him that he can't do something uh, because why should he comprehend it? He's only two years old. He throws himself down onto the floor. He screams, he cries. And I'm now seeing this sort of behavior with adults as we have removed true education from the American education system as right. it's become about emotions. It's become about emotional engineering people to see everything racialized, to feel everything as an emotional wound rather than to think rationally. You are seeing adults that behave like toddlers, right? Black Lives mm -hmm. Matter was the greatest example of this. Absent any facts, people throwing themselves in the streets. Literally, I look at them and I say, you behave worse than my two-year-old, by the way, worse than my two-year-old. And I think that's the point. When you are absent any facts, when you are absent the ability to rationalize and to think logically, this is how you're going and, to and think. And when you start to think about it, right, you're almost pre-programmed by the media telling you how you should feel, telling you how you should react to certain situations, keeping you emotional so you don't react, you using your conscious mind and making the right decision for yourself and for your family. She's on point here. Let's keep it moving. This is how you're going and, to And behave. think about even beyond how people ought to comport themselves generally. Think about people at different stages of life. When you're a little two-year-old, starts throwing himself on the floor and screaming. You say, okay, you're behaving like a two-year-old. Now, my little goddaughter, your m more infant child, probably is just beautiful and wonderful all the time, inspired by her wonderful godfather, you know. And so she, but she will <laughs> behave in a different way. She's behaving in a way that is appropriate for a 10 or 11-month-old. Mm -hmm. Your two-year-old is behaving in a way that's appropriate for a two-year-old. When a 10-year-old behaves like a two-year-old, that's a problem. When a 20-year-old behaves like a two-year-old, that's a bigger problem. When a 30-year-old behaves like a two-year-old, that's a different problem. We have different expectations at different stages in life. But what we're now told today is that we have no expectations, no standards mm -hmm. at all. A th many 30-year-olds do behave like two-year-olds, and political activists who exploit them benefit from that. 
Many men mm. behave like women, many, many women behave like men. And, and this is what gets to the, the heart of the political issue here, which is, can we expect anything of anybody? Is there a standard here? Is there a norm here? Mm. Because if there's a norm for 20 year olds, you should know this, you should behave this way. If there's a standard for men and a standard for women, then when you deviate from that standard, we as a society have the right to say, hey, cut it out. To quote Don Corleone, why don't you go act like a man? What's the matter with you? Right. But we, what we've been told by the people who have disintegrated, deconstructed our whole society is now you can't expect anything from anyone. We're going to be a society of toddlers. And what I take from that is this. We're heading into a direction where we were scared to tell the truth. We rather comfort your feelings, comfort your emotions, pat you on the back, tell you the world's going to be okay, and you're going to make it. In reality, you're only causing more harm by not preparing that child or that young adult versus being factual and telling him what the real what the real world really is like. We're only doing these people a disservice. All right, comforting people's feelings and, com and comforting people's emotions temporarily puts a band-aid over it, but long term, they can't grow from that. Let's get back into it. Well, and that's that's interesting because it really goes back to sort of this molecular bad parenting where you see these parents that have these toddlers and they say, well, we don't believe in telling him no. You know, and, and these these kids act, they're, they're insane. You, I'm like, you are, you're being raised wrong by your parents. Mm -hmm. Well, now we have politicians that are employing this exact same philosophy. We don't believe in telling these kids no. So when they say they're a starfish, they say they're a boy, they think they're an alien, we, we say, well, we must affirm them in their beliefs. And that's right. actually what American society is suffering from. It's yeah. like bad parenting gone big right and again she's absolutely right here you have politicians right now who will do and say anything to keep that position of power rather than just telling the truth they rather coddle emotions and coddle feelings and try to appease everybody instead of just being honest and being factual let's get back into it for a long time we've heard on the right that politics is downstream of culture. And there's a lot of truth to this, and the movies matter a lot, and actually movies matter less today. It's more TV that matters, and social media, and the rituals and the ways that we behave. Yeah, of course, that's all true, and that'll affect your political order. It also goes in the other direction, and the law is also a teacher, kind of like a parent, okay? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. political philosophers have understood this, going all the way back to those ancient Greeks, up through the Founding Fathers in everyone's sense. When you incentivize certain behavior, you're gonna get more of it. When you punish other behavior, you're gonna get less of that behavior. And so if the people running our country are infantile and confused and totally out of their minds and laissez-faire, don't tell anyone no to anything, well, then it's gonna be like an absentee parent. It's gonna be like a neglectful father. How are the kids gonna turn out? Usually not so great. So this is a bit different for me, right? I know when I first started this channel, I was one of the biggest Candace Owens criticizers, man. I was like, how can you say that about this such, such and such? How can you do that? What's going on here? But as time goes on, right, and we all grow, you know, older, and we're starting to see, you know, the world for what it really is, and I'm starting to get more involved in, in the political side of things and stuff that I actually, I actually care about and we actually care about. We're, st I'm starting to see that we have more in common than we do differ, and that's okay. The link to this full video will be down below in the description box, you guys. Make sure you guys click like, subscribe to this content. And until next time, y'all be safe out there. Peace.